Welcome back to the channel. Over the next two days, we're going to be working on my friend Steve's 70 Maverick drag car. Recently had it painted, uh, so we're going to work on a few things. Uh, some panel gap, alignment, looks a little off. Um, going to put side stripes on the car. And there's some trim work that needs to be done as well. And then we're going to get under the car and take a look at the pinning angle, which is also out of whack. At this point, we're going to start working on aligning the body panels. The front fender is a bit out. Never really did the proper alignment of the panels before it left the body shop. So now I need to tackle getting everything a little straighter so that when we hang the decals, we're not going to have issues with things not lining up properly. It takes a little bit of time, a little bit of patience, but in the end we got things pretty well lined up and looking good. The door was a bit of a challenge. I actually had to physically bend it to get it close to where it needs to be, but a little bit of persistence and uh, it came out pretty well. The front fender had the lower half replaced, which made it a bit of a challenge to get it to line up properly with the body lines of the door. When the drip rail moldings are originally installed on this car, Ford started from the back to the front, which meant the front drip rail molding overlapped the rear. When it was put together at the body shop, they did it backwards. They did the front first, and the rear second. Combine this with the fact that there was a ton of paint on the drip rail itself and you had a horrible fit. What had to happen was all the drip rails needed to be sanded down to get rid of the excess buildup of the paint and the primer. Next step is the decal installation. This took quite a long time and I'm not going to bore you with the details. But what I will say is that aligning the door panels was critical to get these decals looking right. To install the decals, I like to use slide-on application gel. I put it all over the body where I'm going to install the decal and then lay the decal over top of it after removing the backer paper. The gel allows me to position the decal properly without it sticking to the body. And it gives me plenty of time to be able to line everything up and then squeegee out the gel to get it fully adhered to the body. Moving on to the hood pin installation, you can see here that Steve's mounted the pins in the location on the radiator support, and then he has drilled the holes in the hood to line up with those pins. To locate the position on the hood to drill for the hood pins, the best way that we found was to use a paint stick. Use a paint stick and apply paint to the pin itself, then gently set the hood down on the pin so it marks the underside of the hood. Looking closer you can see we relocated the hood bumper to where a fender bolt was to help support the hood. Steve is now drilling the holes to attach the discussion plates to the hood. No pressure, you're on video for this. <laughs> 
<laughs> See? We can drag that bit on there. Okay, I feel more comfortable doing it here with you here. But... Take them off. I need a bigger file. My, yeah. <laughs> Let me get one of my smaller ones. After drilling the holes, you get a lot of fibers that break loose from the hood. And the idea here is basically just to file them down and make the hole smooth again. Steve had a great idea to use a black sharpie to color in all the uh, white that shows through from drilling the holes in the hood. Now I'm just going to lay the discussion plates on the hood, center them up over the holes that Steve drilled already, and push through each rivet to locate them in position. Now I'll just go around and rivet them all in. Hopefully if the weather holds out. Beaver Springs. What? Beaver Springs on Saturday. Yeah, yeah I think I'm just gonna go for a day. Yeah. Take this home and clean it up nice. It's gonna look nice. Yeah, she looks great. The one thing we weren't able to address was the pinion angle. Steve had raced the car last year and it worked pretty well, so he decided to leave it alone until we get it back to the shop with the right degree of shims we need to get the pinion angle corrected. At the same time, we'll throw it up on scales, get the car squared away, and uh, set for the rest of the season. At this point, I just want to say thanks to Steve for bringing his car down and allowing me to work on it. It was uh, really a pleasure and a lot of fun hanging out in the shop with you. Brought back a lot of memories of driving in my dad's old Maverick when I was a little kid. Really makes me want to get one. Thanks again for watching.